actually have the, the ability to build more muscle because you're eating a little more protein, you're taking in more calories, you know, because on a low fat diet, you have to have low calorie and then you're starving mm -hmm. yourself and you're not getting enough protein and it's hard for you to build muscle. And if you're not starving yourself from carbohydrates either, you do need a little bit of carb when you're building muscle for the insulin, for the fire. So the vegetables are all you need though. A few nuts and some vegetables working out. Once you're adapted, athletic performance improves, especially for the long distance runners, because mm -hmm. when they were okay. dependent on carbohydrates for their fuel, when the glycogen tank emptied, there's the risk of um, lactic acid buildup before they switch to a fat metabolism in the middle of a race when you don't want it to happen. Once you're adapted to fat burning and you fat load instead of carb load, you could make it through a marathon and not hit a wall okay. because you're running already on the fat metabolism that you usually switch to in the middle of a race. So some of the elite athletes are finding that you know, a keto type metabolism is fine for working out and it's perfect for muscle building, especially muscle building. And if you, you're losing a lot of weight, like 50, 60, 100 pounds, you need to fill the, that skin with some muscle yep. because otherwise the skin is going to, you know, it's, it's been like a rubber band that's been stretched out when you have too much weight on you for a long time. So you don't want the skin to start hanging. You want to fill it with muscle. Yeah. And the way to do that, it, that's a healthy weight. That's the kind of weight you want, muscle weight. Yeah. So you had talked about with um, with vegetables and there's always, I guess there's always a, a, a stigma of here's the good foods and the bad foods. Yeah. Is, is Atkins that way or is this, here's your good your foods, your foundation vegetables, your meats, but then here's foods to avoid. Um, and I found out, I was thinking, okay, I'm an induction, adding a little bit more in, I'm gonna grab this bag of baby carrots and take this with me. <gasps> sugars, I can't believe how many sugars are in the damn carrots. Yeah. So there's there's really something, um, and again, you know, without telling everybody where to go and find this, but Atkins.com, this has those great foundation vegetables. How mm -hmm. do you, I guess, how do you give that guidance? Like here's to start, but really you gotta do some research. To keep it simple, I just tell people count carbs, get a carb counter either like the little book or, or the app. There's so many apps to count carbs. Yep. Just count your carbs and keep them under 50. And that's all you need to worry about. Everything else will fall into place now. So it's not so much, don't, don't eat this vegetable. It's just, hey, if you're keeping it within this amount, that's, you're okay. that's your success right yeah. there. Okay. But the people that are on Atkins 20, that's, I just added that's in the little latest little. books that there's the foundation vegetables. You know, people try to do it. It's like, okay, I'll count my carbs and I'll have a slice of bread for my 20 grams of carbon. Then they don't ah. eat the vegetables. <laughs> you need the colorful yeah. vegetables for the antioxidants, for the fiber. You know, okay. as long as you're meeting your vegetable requirement of, you know, 15 grams a day, then you can fill the rest yeah. of your carbs with whatever, really, as long as they're under 50, you're going to be okay. And, and there's um, a lot to be said. There's so much mention in all of the books about keeping to the four ounces of dairy. Why is limiting that dairy so, so important? Because I, I, yep. Yeah. <laughs> is that, that's that lactic, I can't Lactose. talk anymore. We'll just, yeah. we'll let you take it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just it's because of the milk sugar. That's, you know, I mean, remember I said the body will burn any sugar before it burns fat. Yeah. So if you have too much of the cheese, then the body, that'll give it the sugar it needs not to burn fat. I am but four ounces is healthy an amount of cheese. Yeah. You know, that's like four, four slices of American cheese if you want a visual. So there's enough cheese to keep you satisfied. It is. Um, it really, it, it absolutely keeps you abreast to, to really look at your portions. Um, and there is something about portion controlling. I don't think there's, when it comes to meats yeah. and vegetables, that's not where your portions are. Yeah. It's, it's, it is counting out those nuts and saying, you know, to be prepared because that success on this diet absolutely comes from being prepared. Because if you get into a situation that it's been four or five hours since you can eat, and there's only a vending machine there to have a, you know, a small bag of nuts or to have a shake or a bar with you, yeah. um, that's where it comes from. And I think a lot of people get frustrated with diets and, and with trying to lose weight or just trying to overall get healthy because 
small things like that they hit a snag and it all goes down because yeah. you know you're the you know the science here is is this is atkins a low carb diet that you could be good for a few days and like oh i'm just going to have this candy bar i'm just going to have this bag of chips and i'll be right back on it no because it takes four <laughs> remember i said there's an adaptation phase yeah so yep. once you switch back to a sugar metabolism it's going to take you four days to start burning fat again so the next well, time, time you look candy bar and next time you look at a candy bar, say, is this worth four days of not burning that? <laughs> and then well, you'll answer yourself. Yeah, and I think you and I have talked before about, um, you know, having some people can do that where they, you know, and I know people who do this and I've been through phases of this where and it affects me a little bit more than I want it to. But like, you know, Saturdays, they don't eat good and then they eat good all week. I mean, there are people who maintain once they get to, yeah. you know, kind of where they want to be. And I think that's the other thing if you research Atkins that I think is, is nice is you, you know, it tells you, you know, get your good goal weight and you can figure out what keeps you there and then if you start going a little too off the rails as long as you're watching yourself you know then you can ratchet back down and figure it out and I think that was one of the things when I first got into it where you um you know coached me as far as um figuring out how to climb the ladder as far as adding carbs in especially when I was really working out because I mean it gets it gets addicting like especially if you have as much weight to lose as, as I did and I still would like to lose some more um you know, but you're like, okay, what can I do next? Like, this is like, I want it to go faster, which to your point, like it's better to actually lose it in a good cadence so that you don't have the excess skin, yeah. which can be frustrating because at first, you know, you're, you're really dropping a lot quick and then it's, it's harder over time. Yeah, but yeah. I think that it's important or it had been important for me to figure out when I needed to start adding more carbs in because I did start stalling out. Like I was good and healthy, but like I wanted to keep toning yeah. and stuff. So you know, it's a, a process like anything else, You're, you know, your body's a machine, right? So yeah. you got to figure out what, what fuels your machine. And I think that was one of the things that you and I talked about as far as, you know, some, that dairy affects some people worse than others. So some people can't do as much or some people can do more than others. So, you know, I think there's, you know, finding that balance is an important, yeah. um, you know, but I, I think too, though, this is a diet that I, I haven't met the person who, who didn't have success on it. I've met the people who decide they can't hack not eating bread, but <laughs> you know, they did have success when they were doing it. Like my, my both my brothers think I'm crazy, but they're like, there's something wrong with you that you can do that. I'm like, I don't, I just feel. I didn't know you were actually going to call out your own family. I knew that's who you were thinking, Dave, but wow. Oh, my, my older brother deserves it. He'll be fine. <laughs> he's 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 the you uh, know the, what when they start gaining weight and not feeling well they're going to come back to you and say what was it that you were doing again well, because now that everybody in my family is older they used to think i had an eating disorder you know in an italian <laughs> family it's like oh they're still right. again it's yep. like, huh. and now that they're all fat and they're starting to get sick now they're coming to me it's like what is it that you said that yeah, you were how, doing? how is that <laughs> you want to oh. tell me how to do it now that's that's funny so, but Colette, we had talked a little bit before we came on camera about, um, you know, just all of the benefits that low carb and that really changing to this whole style, um, lifestyle of eating healthier can bring. Um, and um, in my campaign, one of the big things I advocate for is, is mental health. And I see people that struggle all over the place with mental health. Um, it, it, common sense is just eating better everything, you know, gets better, right? Um, your physical health, your emotional health, your mental health. Um, is there any science to connecting, you know, a better diet to better brain? I mean, we hear about brain foods and blueberries and, and broccoli. Is there something to be said for, you know, where does, does Atkins have a crossover with supporting mental health? Well, as far as the brain, we know that the brain functions better with ketones instead of sugar. And that's why sometimes they call dementia a, a, a brain diabetes. Um, so, but those are the kind of people that need to stay very low. So the, the, the byproduct of fat burning, remember I said you turn, you burn fat for fuel instead of sugar, the byproduct of fat burning are ketones. That's, that's how the keto diet got its name. Yep. Um, and so the, we know the brain functions better. So it can, it can actually control seizures and people with seizures. And it could slow down dementia and Alzheimer's disease, that much we know. We know when you cut out a lot of chemicals in the food, the children with chemical sensitivities, 
like hyperactivity or behavior disorders or ADD or anything like that. Once you cut out the chemicals, there is some sign in the sugar, of course. There is some science that shows that there is some uh, improvement in behavior. We need more science when it comes to mood. We just know individual foods offer certain nutrients that help with mood. Um, like bone broth is, you know, has certain okay. amino acids and things in there that'll help the brain. But we don't know how a low carb diet could affect mood yet. And that's, I'm hoping is the science of the future because I that believe I like think people are better on it. We need to get a hold of Duke University again. Again, and yeah. Get some grants going, get the National Institute of Health in that's on right. this. Um, I, again, there's, but that's I, what is so fascinating about, um, you know, from 1990 and Dr. Atkins and, and how this has really evolved. And it hasn't just stayed pigeonholed to say, this is no, this is what we have yeah. to do. This is the only way the diet works. It has absolutely evolved with the science that we find out about the human body and, and mm -hmm. about, you know, our capabilities. Um, and it's, it, it is, it's fascinating to me. And I, I think this is why it was such an interesting topic to bring to our viewers to, to share where this can really, you know, in times that people are not feeling great about maybe themselves or about the world around them, mm -hmm. here's something you absolutely 100% have, have control over, which is your health yeah, and, and you can really take control of that in, in times that seem uncertain. Well, and I think, uh, you know, a couple things. Uh, when I very first started at Atkins, um, I remember the, uh, uh, a guy that actually Mike that was my boss at, at Atkins and I used to work for when we were at EAS and he tried to he tried to rob me from Atkins within two weeks that I was at Atkins and I remember I went to lunch with him downtown and he's like and the recession had just started right it was 2008 that's when I started right. at Atkins and um, he's like and I quote do you really want to be selling candy bars in a recession is what he told me I'm like well I know this team and they're a good team and I, I think you know I'm not gonna I, I just got this job I'm not gonna bail but you know I, I think what we saw in the time that I was there through the recession we were very successful because we were helping people and people yeah. were looking for something to go exactly. after and I think exactly. right now it's the same and I mean like as far as like how it's uh, personally affected my mental health I've been in a lot better mood since I lost almost 100 pounds you know it's, it definitely affected my um, self-esteem and stuff so there's something to be said for you know that that right. portion of it too and just feeling more active and not That's feeling true. kind of blah um, yeah you know, I think that there, there's obviously, uh, you know, there, your own uh, reality that can affect your mood um, as much as the other things that you guys were talking about as far as like chemical imbalance and stuff and a lot of, you know, how food plays into that too. So, you know, it's, it's and everybody's different, right? So some of us, our brain chemistry, you know, is, is fine, but we still have our personal reality that can bring us down. Um, yeah. You know, so ho hopefully, if anything else, you know, we've, we've, you know, given some people some ideas about how they could get on this. I get a lot of questions about it since, you know, losing as much weight as I did. And, you know, kind of being even as just a local public figure, people still know me and they're like, what, you know, where'd the rest of you go? So it's, <laughs> it's, it's been interesting. And I think it's been a, a, a good way to impact people with my, you know, personal influence you know, that I have in the community. So I very much appreciate you you being willing to take the time. I know that you're super oh, busy. And I, I think uh, it's neat to actually have you on and have people meet you because I'd be like, people would be like, well, how did you do this? Be like Atkins. I'm like, I do have some, I have some tools and some friends who can keep, keep, keep me on the right way and keep, keep kicking me in the butt to make sure I was doing the right thing for the first 12 months. Um, I'm the keeper of the diet. <laughs> So, so with that, I'm, you know, Colette, what kind of would be your closing words in this time that kind of, you know, advice to people with your 40 years of doing this? Yeah. Um, if you don't have your health, you have nothing, right? And now's the time to take control of your health. You know, before you were so busy and things were moving fast, you know, now that things slow down a little bit, and with, with paying more attention to trying not to get the virus, let's get our immunity functioning at top speed because, because without your health, you have nothing. I mean, nothing else matters. You could be yes. so successful and so rich. And if you don't have your health, none of that matters. Yes. So make health your number one choice right now, especially now. 
That's great advice. Great advice. 